fashion. You gotta have the fashion mastered, you know what I mean? Like like I said, the Kangos, the Clock Wallabies. Before the Clock Wallabies and the Kangos, it was Adidas and Pumas and um, Proquettes, Mark Necks, Silver Medallions and stuff like that. But then the Bronx moved on, well, not really, Brooklyn too, you know, with the Jamaican, the Clock Wallabies and the, the whole suit pants and the, the, the slacks and the shirt. It was just like a mature look, so it looked good on a young person, because you know, you look better when you're young trying to look old than if you're old trying to look old, so, you know. <laughs> so, it looked slick to see a young kid wearing shoes and slacks and dress shirts with a, you know, a little stylish piece of jewelry here and there and a little Kango and a little glasses to sell yourself. Soul clubs were always great places you could dress up. You know, they, you, you, you could, you could, they were, they were, I mean, punk started, I, I'd hate to break it to you because punk's a very political scene, but the initial punk scene in London was a load of bored soul boys who liked dressing up. And that's pretty much what I was at the age of 14 as a kind of bored soul boy that liked dressing up. You were a 14 year old, so yeah. bored, so let young. Let me, let me, I'll talk you through the look. It was a, a peroxide wedge with a black underneath. Um, uh, pegged four pleat peg panel, tr uh, um, peg trousers. Uh, rubber sandals and a mohair mohair jumper. I mean that whole kind of early punk thing, the mohair jumpers and stuff was was a kind of throwback from the from the soul scene. And as I said, you could go to those things without fear. Obviously, you ran the risk of being beaten up on your way to the club. But once you were in the club, you were quite you were quite safe. We made music. We lived in squads, and but um, I never dressed really like a punk. I always had this um, end of seventies kind of dressing style and people always like, the punks were also very square they were like oh look how you look you look like a secretary or some kind of like so I never really felt um, 100% uh, punk because they are also very square so when I started to run this shop on the Kings Road Chelsea called Acme Attractions which funny enough again going back to import how important scenes are back in my day shops were these kind of cultural centers where fashion and new music movements did emerge. And on the King's Road, there was two shops, Acme Attractions and a shop owned by a guy called Vivian, a, girl, a woman called Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren, I'm sure you're familiar with. And these were the two places that all the kind of hip young people that were looking for something else gravitated towards. Now in Vivian and Malcolm's shop, they were a bit more Eurocentric. In my shop, dub reggae all day long. And what was interesting is that pulled in as many of the customers as the clothes did. In fact, probably more. We hooked up with a lot of guys in the art world and um, we just became a one. So, you know, the idea of me developing the clothes with the music really worked hand in hand. And I wasn't trying to be a designer at that time, but I was just trying to make functional wear. And the idea of the funky dread on our shirts, because the dances that we used to do were so, like so many people would be there, the people could identify with the people that were running it. Then people wanted to buy the shirts. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go back to the guys in the warehouse to find out how would I make these shirts and manufacture them. And we ended up drawing our own sketches and making up our own t-shirts. and. It was more lucrative than the music business because a, a T-shirt was like nothing, you know? In the 80s, like shows, fashion shows would have themes, you know? So you would have like uh, the Navy theme, you would have like, you know, okay, Technicolor theme, whatever. So people would like have one track for a theme, then fade it out, then have another theme. It was super, it was quite childish, you know? It was like a school play or something like that. And then... In the 90s, people realized it would have to be more focused, you know, so it was a collection was about one ID, this is what I feel like, and one kind of music and the whole thing. The shows became much shorter. They used to be like 45 minutes up to an hour. Like Mugler in the 80s, like I've seen shows that were like an hour and 15 minutes long, so you have time to do basically everything, you know. You can do find your nails, order a pizza, whatever. And now it's just go see a fashion show. It's like uh, it's like watching a video clip, more or less, you know. So it's we're trying to be as focused as a video clip because yeah, you, you have to get it like within the first forty-five seconds. Once I found out about Dapper Dan, and that was a whole new universe, you know what I mean? I went and seen Dap. I walked up in the spot and I was like, "Yo, man, let me get one of those, one of those, one of those," and you know that right there kind of 
you know, help the the fashion thing too, man. But we we um, you know, I think I think our music spoke a little louder than what we was wearing. You know what I mean? Because it was, you know, um, more more forward, man. You know, the the, the clothes back then. You know, people was wearing them. It wasn't that big as you know fashion today, and how much the little kids want to get with what everybody's wearing today. Back then it was just, you know, if you got it, you got it. If you don't, you had a other hot thing. If not, you know what I mean? Aprender a se espelhar nas outras cantoras americanas são uma das grandes influenciadoras em termos de imagem, corpo. Eu gosto daquele corpo da Nicki Minaj, aquela cara de Barbie. <risos> aquela característica perfeita. Gosto muito. E graças a Deus é, um, é uma grande responsabilidade porque eu associei a minha imagem, a minha música. Eu, em Angola, uh, dito tendências, se eu usar um cabelo comprido ou vermelho ou amarelo, vai virar moda. Se eu usar um batom rosa, vai virar moda. Aqui no, na, nas ruas já chamavam, vem comprar o batom da Titica, vem comprar a calça da Titica. <risos> é, pai, é muito, muito, muito bom.